Hey, welcome back to Investment Fund Secrets. I'm Bridger Payton, and today we're gonna to talk about why I strongly disagree with modern portfolio theory. Hey, welcome back to Investment Fund Secrets. So today I wanna to talk about modern portfolio theory and why I kind of hate it. Now, I don't hate all of it. There's pieces of it that I love, and I'm thankful that we have it since the 50s. It's, it's built our financial models, but I think there are a few pieces in there that put people into boxes and put strains, especially when you're starting a fund, there are things that you need to leave out in your models and profiles when you're looking at this. So first off, what is modern portfolio theory? So this was invented and came out in a paper by Harry Markowitz in the 50s. He actually won the, the Nobel Prize for it and essentially says this. It says that your portfolio should contain assets in it and those assets should be like almost like a true hedge fund, right? They should hedge one another. So if one asset makes money, the other asset will probably lose money and vice versa. If one asset dips, then another asset makes money. And so overall, your whole portfolio should go up over time. And they have in there, he calls it the efficient frontier. This is the optimal miss, mix of risk and reward. And I get that, right? You got to think about that. And I, that's the part I like is in your portfolio of what are, whether you're buying companies, whether you're issuing debt, whether you're buying real estate in your fund, there's going to be a perfect mix where you get the highest returns for the optimal amount of risk. Um, and then the problem with this though, is they, they base risk on volatility, right? So how high are the highs, how low are the lows now in a book called black swans by Nassim Taleb, he says that the market changes much more than MT, MTP says it will. So when you have your model and modern portfolio theory, He's saying it's going to actually probably change a lot more than that than than you think. And a lot of people get stuck in their uh, in their model, in their portfolio. They set it once and it's frozen in time. They don't update it with market conditions. Um, now, I personally think modern portfolio theory is awesome for your personal investments or if you want a long-term type of fund, maybe like a mutual fund that's going to, or a 401k, this helps, right? Cause you're preserving wealth. Um, a lot of wealthy people actually, I was listening to a podcast a little bit ago, a really wealthy guy says, I, I think about diversification now when I, I'm a billionaire. He says, I think about it of just managing and maintaining my money. It's not diversification. Diversification isn't really to grow wealth. It's more to maintain wealth. So people like us that are starting from, starting from the bottom or even the middle, right? If you're going to diversify like crazy, you're really just maintaining wealth and going to grow with the markets, which is fine. But if you're going to be a fund manager and try to produce some type of asymmetrical risk, which we're going to talk about in a minute, you need to do something above that, above and beyond that. So Ray Dalio uh, famously published his all weather portfolio. And if you've seen this Tony Robbins interview, he's actually given us a few places, but Tony Robbins asked Ray Dalio, he said, Hey, if you could only pass on just a set of principles to your children and next generation, what would you give them? You can't give them money. What would you give them? He said, well, I'd give them the all weather portfolio. And he walked through and in that portfolio has, um, this allocation, he has 7.5% to gold, 7.5% to commodities, 30% to ETF stocks, 15% to intermediate term bonds, and then 40% to long-term bonds. And the way he thought about it was, well, you have four different scenarios. You have market contraction, market expansion, you have inflation and deflation. So I'm going to put assets in each one of those classes according to, to what I think the risk profile, the sharp ratio is for those. And that's what he came up with his all weather portfolio, which I think is freaking awesome if you're again, doing it for your personal investing. Um, or you want to maintain wealth for 40, 50 years. If you're a financial advisor, this is what they're probably going to tell you to do, right? When running a fund, typically investors are looking for higher than expected returns. That's most of the fund documents say this fund is set up to receive higher than expected returns An all weather portfolio or modern portfolio theory will try to get you uh, an average return that'll grow over a long time in a fund. You're trying to go a little bit higher than that. And so you'll, and a lot of people will say, and this is in my, my interview with Adam Campbell a few weeks ago, we talked about this is in business school. I've been told the same thing. People say, well, higher risk than higher return, lower risk, lower return. Right. And it's just zeros and ones. It's black and white. That's how it is. And me and Adam, both Adam said this though. He's just, I said, I just hate that more than anything that is designed that that phrase higher risk higher risk higher return lower risk lower return 
that out that beta version of life is designed by people that don't want you to invest in the market. So in Adam's interview, if you want to go listen to it, it's a few weeks ago, he talks about you have three different things in your portfolio. He says, first off, you have alpha. Okay. So alpha is your unique value proposition to the world. So when starting a fund, you got to have your special sauce. Your alpha doesn't need to be directly unique to you. Other companies can do it, but what is you're going to put your flag on that hill and say, this is what I'm going to die by this theory of we're going to buy B class apartments or we're going to invest in um, micro cap tech companies or whatever your alpha is. And you feel like you can add a ton of value to your investors. You got to die on that alpha. Okay. Secondly, he says you need to have beta, right? And beta simple, simply is your risk profile. And that's where the high risk, high return, but this is where he, he changed it. He said, that he, first off, like I said, that's a flat out lie from people that want you to invest in their 401k or from Northwest Mutual, right? And they want you to put money in. There also is one more thing. So you have your risk, you have your return, but you also have your control profile. So look at entrepreneurship, right? You have high risk, but you could get high returns, but entrepreneurship, you can control your business. So you look at yourself and say, well, I can control my business. I feel like it's way less risky than what the averages are in the country for entrepreneurship. So I'm going to go start a business. It's that's different than saying, well, I'm just going to go buy Microsoft stock and compete with people on wall street. That I would say is high risk, high return, right? Low risk, low return there. You're, you have a very little control profile unless you're a big player on wall street and can control and manipulate markets. So when looking at funds though, you actually have quite a bit of control on your investments and that control factor usually doesn't account for in modern portfolio theory. They don't account for you have 30 years of experience in real estate and you're just a baller and you know exactly how to do eight plexes. And that's like your one thing you do eight plexes in a certain County in the country. And you're just the king of that. And you can get over expected returns with least amount of risk. Ray Dalio calls that. And a lot of people call that asymmetrical risk. And that's what we're looking for as fund managers. And when launching a fund, you need to find asymmetrical risk where it's a high risk or excuse me, high return, low risk type of investment. Now that is the, the, after alpha, you have your unique proposition beta. That's what you're figuring out is your control piece in your investment. So with a true modern portfolio theory, a lot of people say it's kind of outdated because markets first off change. And then secondly, you have a huge control factor over your fund. Now I suggest when you're looking at your alpha or finding your unique niche in the market, find something, you know, how to control super well. And if you don't know how to do that, find someone to partner with that has an amazing position has, has cornered the market. You could say on a certain area, I talked to a guy a few weeks ago, he was amazing at doing a senior assisted living units under about 15 units. He was doing these. It was just right in the niche. He said, I've done like a hundred of these deals. We have huge returns on them. They're not risky. I, uh, to me, they're not risky. I don't, maybe an outside investor would look at him like, wow, that's kind of risky. It says to me, it's not risky because I have a control piece. I know exactly how to manage these properties more efficiently than other people. He said with a senior assisted living center, we'd have, we'd have Bluetooth devices that help us, you know, notify us when someone's gone to the bathroom and I'm actually going to probably invite him on the show um, pretty soon here, but that's, I, I want to have him tell your story, but that's when you're looking for asymmetrical risk. That's why modern portfolio theory doesn't really work. It, it works in some aspects, but you need to look past it when you're starting and launching your fund. Anyways, love you guys. Hope this episode was valuable. If you have questions, find me on Instagram. It's usually the easiest way to do it. Bridger underscore Pennington. Shoot me a DM. I respond to all DMs currently at least. And I love to, to hear your feedback, what you guys think. Um, also, if you want to learn more about what we do, what we offer, go to investmentfundsecrets.com and you guys can connect with us. Um, anyways, love you all. See ya.